the man who will kill Dracula. Castlevania is a popular animated series which premiered on Netflix worldwide in 2017. It's set in a dark, medieval-like world inspired by the famous video game series with the same name. The show's story mainly follows events from Castlevania III, Dracula's Curse, mixing in bits from other games like Symphony of the Night and Curse of Darkness. The series revolves around a vampire hunter fighting to save a city under attack by Dracula's army of monsters. In this video, we'll cover everything from start to end. So let's get started. First, let's take a little look at the series' history before we get started. Our story takes place in Wallachia, an old-fashioned Romanian city that is home to Dracula Vlad Tepes. He is a fearsome vampire and a sorcerer who acts as the series' major antagonist and is always at odds with the Belmont clan. Tragic events occur one day when Lisa, Dracula's wife, is wrongfully convicted of witchcraft and executed by burning at the stake. Driven by pain and anger, he charges Wallachia with his army of the devil, causing havoc across the region. This leaves the survivors to deal with feelings of horror and insecurity. In response, Trevor Belmont, the sole surviving member of a renowned monster-hunting family, teams up with sorceress Saipa Belnades and Alucard, the damper son of Dracula, to fight Dracula's army. They set out on a dangerous quest to stop Dracula's attack and give their land a fighting chance. The story opens up with a young girl named Lisa looking for Dracula, in hopes of becoming a doctor and obtaining scientific knowledge. Her boldness and ambition intrigue Dracula, so he offers to teach her and she thinks she can help him find humanity. Maybe I can teach you to like people again. Or at least tolerate them. Or stop putting them on sticks. Both of them end up falling for one other and finally get married. I think I might like you. Then, in 1475, 20 years later in the town of Targovist, the bishop charged Lisa of witchcraft after uncovering some scientific equipment in her home. As a consequence, she suffers burning at the stake. After receiving the news of Lisa's death, Dracula, distraught, warns the people of Wallachia that they've got a year to make peace or else he will personally kill them all. One year, and then I'll wipe all human life from the land of Wallachia. He ignores his son Alucard's appeals to concentrate on the individual accountable rather than humanity as a whole and instead attacks him. One year later, the Archbishop organizes an event in defiance of Dracula. As promised, Dracula kills the Archbishop ruins the church and commands his army of demonic mech creatures to slaughter every human surviving in Wallachia. As the army spreads over the country, the citizens place the blame on the kingdom's aristocratic families, especially the Belmonts. Following an adverse confrontation at an inn, Listen, forget it. I'll just go. Fatigue and hungry, Trevor Belmont seeks shelter in the devastated city of Greset. Despite the continual danger of Dracula's soldiers hovering over the town each night, Trevor goes on. Along his voyage, he finds that people in the area point fingers at a group of roaming intellectuals called the Speakers, blaming them responsible for Dracula's continuous assaults. Anyone can see that we are not responsible for what befalls Gresham. In a courageous effort, Trevor intervenes to rescue the Elder of the Speakers from the hands of fraudulent priests. Grateful for his aid, the Elder guides him to the safety of the Speakers' refuge. Concerned about their well-being, he pushes the Elder and his people to depart the city. However, the Elder's determination remains unshakable as he relates the sad loss of his granddaughter. Hook up with another train. It's his grandchild. Darn. I don't care. It's the Elder's grandchild down there. The kid descended into the dangerous tunnels under Greset in the search of the sleeping soldier, a mythological figure thought to hold the ability to slay Dracula. Reluctantly, Trevor decides to go on a risky journey to retrieve the abducted grandchild, knowing that the destiny of Greset hangs in the balance. Trevor explores the dark catacombs beneath Greset, finding strange torches and old machine parts. Deeper down, he sees torches that light up by themselves, and then fights a one-eyed monster called the Cyclops. After a tough battle, he defeats it, and a statue nearby turns into a young woman named Saifa Belnades. I'm Saifa Belnades. She feels sick and asks him why he's there. He explains that they made a deal with her grandfather and asked her to go back with him. However, she reveals that she wishes to find this sleeping soldier, but Trevor thinks it's just a story to trip people into danger. Despite her doubts, she agrees to leave with him. They return to Cephas' people, where Trevor reminds them they promised to leave the city. You're leaving tonight, remember? Well, uh, yes. Cephas wants to keep looking for the sleeping soldier, but he warns it could bring trouble. Nevertheless, he agrees to stay with him for a while. Later, Outside, he is confronted by priests who work for the bishop, 
and they tell him that the bishop wants to see him. At the church, the bishop warns Trevor to stay out of their business, but Trevor blames him for causing problems in the city. The bishop threatens him but offers him mercy if he leaves. To all intents and purposes, I will be the church. Afterwards, Trevor reunites with the speakers and tells them that they must leave because the bishop's followers are getting angry. The speakers refuse to retreat, so Trevor hides them in the Cyclops' chamber for safety. Afterwards, as night falls, he faces the angry mob alone, standing up for what he believes in. On the other hand, chaos erupts as Dracula's monsters begin roaming the city. As the angry mob surrounds Grezit's church, the bishop anticipates news of the speaker's demise, but is met with unexpected visitors. A massive demon, Blue Fangs, reveals the sunset has passed and mocks the bishop's faith. He does not love us, and he does not love you. Stricken, the bishop defends his devotion only to be condemned by Blue Fangs for his heinous deeds. The demon, symbolizing the bishop's abandonment by God, claims him as their own, sealing his fate with fatal kiss. Let me. <laughs> Meanwhile, Trevor flees through Grezit's streets, cornered in the town square by the mob. Saifa, displaying her magical prowess, conjures a fiery barrier, protecting him. She refuses to let others fight on her behalf, standing with Trevor against the mob's fury. What are you doing here? I didn't ask you to fight for me. I fight for myself. Fine. Spotting the bishop's last ally, the priest, Trevor confronts him. Exposing the priest's lies and instigations, Trevor incites the crowd against him and the priest meets a grisly end at the hands of the enraged townspeople. As demons invade, Trevor takes charge, organizing a defense with weapons and blessed water. With Cepha's ice magic and Trevor's leadership, they rally the townsfolk, repelling the demonic onslaught. Amidst the chaos, Trevor faces Blue Fangs, triumphing with Cepha's aid. The ground collapses, plunging Trevor and Cepha into deeper catacombs. where they encounter Alucard, a vampire. Story. The Messiah sleeps under Greshit, the man who will save us from Dracula. A few mistaken intentions lead to a duel, but it is soon halted by Sifa. To their surprise, Alucard reveals his need for rest and joins forces with Trevor and Sifa, driven by a shared goal, to stop Dracula, not a surprise for us to be honest. We three. We can destroy him. A flashback is shown in which Lisa in her humble house is accused of witchcraft by the bishop. Helplessness causes her to be forcibly taken while in the midst of aiding Mrs. Juvera. Meanwhile, in the present, within the somber confines of Dracula's castle, he wallows in his sorrow, haunted by memories of his lost happiness. Addressing his vampire court, Dracula surprises them by entrusting humans Hector and Isaac with planning their next assault on humanity. Hector, Isaac. Present me with plans for our next steps today. Here, Dracula elucidates his preference for Hector and Isaac, citing their unique insight and human malevolence. The Norse vampire Godbrand opposes, arguing that they should depend on vampires rather than humans for leadership. Two humans in your inner court, and they are the ones who will plan our next attack. But Dracula explains Hector and Isaac's hate for the human race makes them far more credible than the vampires. The only two generals in my court who are not driven by thirst. They are not vampires like you and I, Godbrand. And that is why I trust them. Reflecting on his own traumatic past, Hector vows vengeance, while Dracula callously expresses his apathy towards human suffering. In the beleaguered town of Grezit, Sefa reluctantly bids adieu to her fellow speakers, grappling with feelings of abandonment despite Trevor's presence. This is where you're supposed to tell me that I'm not alone, Belmont. Alucard, burdened by the weight of his familial conflict, contemplates his opposition to his father's reign of terror. On the other hand, Hector and Godbrand reconcile, recognizing the necessity of a more organized approach to their genocidal campaign against humanity. As the castle undergoes a mysterious relocation to a secluded valley, Hector prepares to reanimate the corpses of Grezit's fallen victims, setting the stage for further bloodshed. Dracula, ever enigmatic, activates the mechanism orchestrating the castle's relocation, hinting at a significant shift in strategy that could spell further devastation for humanity. Trevor, Sifa, and Alucard discuss their plan to defeat Dracula by seeking answers at the Belmont Estate, known for its monster hunting resources. Collecting knowledge and material of generations of Belmonts who fought the creatures of the night. 
That sounds interesting. While Cypher prepares a covered wagon, Alucard questions Trevor's confidence in finding a solution there and he claims that it's their best shot, so they set off from Grezit. Meanwhile, in Dracula's War Council, tensions rise as Carmilla joins I am Carmilla. I am come from Fasteria to join the War Council. Mocking Lisa's death and criticizing Dracula's recent failures. Angered, Dracula confronts her privately, questioning her true motives behind these remarks. She defends her actions, revealing insider information from Godbrand of the castle's movements. Godbrand has been keeping me apprised of your castle's position. Your current location was also advantageous. To counter this, Dracula assigns her to aid the devil forge masters Isaac and Hector. On the other hand, as the trio camps for the night, Sypha learns about Alucard's immunity to daylight due to his half-human heritage. Alucard also shares his tragic story of his mother's murder by the church that drove Dracula to madness. Sent him to travel, to learn the true state of the world, the true nature of humans and how they live. Furthermore, he reveals Dracula's master plan to build a world without humans. But you won't be here. And you won't be here. None of you. During their journey, they encounter demons defeating them, but not before one escapes. Meanwhile, in the castle, Isaac reflects on his abusive past and resurrects a dead demon brought by Godbrand. Where there is only loyalty and only love. The War Council debates their next move, with Carmilla suggesting monitoring the Belmont estate, suspecting Trevor and the Belmonts are after their rumored stash of magical weapons. Hector, working on creating demons for Dracula's army, reminisces about resurrecting a dead dog in his youth, shocking his mother with its grotesque appearance. Carmilla observes his work, impressed by the night creature's creation, and proposes sending forces to the Belmont estate to prevent any dangerous weapons from falling into enemy hands. We sent a group to the Belmont home to begin a search for their hold. However, Hector reminds her that Dracula must approve troop deployments not so fast, Missy not so fast. She then inquires about Hector's allegiance to Dracula, learning that he agreed to aid Dracula after his return from travels, seeking revenge for Lissa's death. Hector agrees to Carmilla's plan but emphasizes the need for Dracula's approval. She tasks him with creating creatures loyal to him and persuading Dracula to attack Brela. Make some troops that you can trust completely with whatever they find, and then help me convince Dracula to attack Brela. Meanwhile, Trevor, Sifa, and Alucard explore the ruins of the Belmont estate. Trevor shares family history, revealing their French origin and Leon Belmont's establishment of the estate in Wallachia. How old were you when your family home was taken? Been on your own since you were 13? They discover a vast library containing weapons and artifacts. Sefa delves into research while Trevor finds the Morning Star and Alucard, disturbed by vampire skulls, a grim reminder of their species' persecution. It's like a museum dedicated to the extermination of my people, so no. Elsewhere, Godbrand expresses concerns to Dracula about the repercussions of exterminating humans, fearing for the vampire's survival. If you kill all the humans, where does the continuing supply of human blood come from? Dracula reassures him but dismisses his worries, prompting Guybrand to confide in Carmilla. Suspecting Dracula's suicidal intentions, Carmilla recounts her past defiance against a tyrannical sire, vowing not to submit to another like him. Never again. Godbrand dreams of hunting humans in the snow, reminiscing about the thrill of the kill. However, disappointed by his servant's offering of a pay instead of human blood, he begins to question Dracula's leadership, aligning with Carmilla's concerns, really Godbrand. Damn it all, that bloody woman is right. Some things must be done. Meanwhile, Trevor and Alucard discover a magic mirror with potential for remote viewing and transportation. They banter as they explore, with Sekva teasing Trevor about his name's origin. Carmilla continues to court Hector, highlighting Dracula's apparent descent into madness and his treatment of Lisa. She proposes overthrowing Dracula and relocating the castle to Brela. The castle lands in Brela. Urging Hector to create forces for her. My own forces will take the castle and unseat Dracula. Dracula recruits Isaac, recounting their past encounters and revealing his true intentions for the war on humans. Isaac pledges loyalty while Dracula confides concerns about the War Council's dissent and Hector's wavering support. In a ruthless raid, Godbrand leads generals in massacring a human village for blood. As the night unfolds, Trevor offers comfort to Sypha, while Alucard explores the library. She reflects on the differences between Trevor and Alucard's melancholy. He's a person in his own right. It's not like your sadness. 
Returning from the village slaughter, Godbrand approaches Isaac, advocating for rebellion against Dracula. However, Isaac perceives Godbrand's treachery and kills him, acknowledging the corruption within Dracula's court. Thank you for revealing to me how the corruption of the world has made its way into Dracula's court. Perched on the castle walls, Isaac bids farewell to Godbrand, scattering his ashes. Below, Carmilla commands her troops through a magic mirror, ordering them to Brela. A vampire searches for Godbrand in vain, raising Carmilla's suspicions. He must be somewhere. Meanwhile, Saifa explores the Belmont Library, pondering her people's stories while Alucard worries about Saifa and Trevor growing closer. She discovers something important in a book but needs help deciphering it. On the other hand, Hector and Isaac discuss outside the castle. Hector suggests attacking Brela to quell the council's discord and Isaac agrees, aiming to end the chaos. And it would get the war room pointed in the same direction. Hector shares the plan with Carmilla, who eagerly supports it, and Isaac relays Hector's proposal to Dracula, who reluctantly agrees. Carmilla is pleased, plotting to consolidate her power, of course she would be. In the library, Seca finally finds a spell to immobilize Dracula's castle, while Hector's monsters draw nearer. That's probably not gone. Hector's monsters strive to breach the magical door, guarding the library, while downstairs, Trevor readies for defense, and Sypha finishes the locking spell. Alucard, on the other hand, tinkers with the distance mirror, hoping to locate Dracula's castle. Eventually, the night creatures pierce the magical barrier and descend. Dracula shifts his castle to Brayla's heart. To Brayla, then. So, in chaos, and his generals lead the night creatures into the city. Trevor confronts the night creature onslaught, clashing with a massive demon. Despite the demon's might, he seizes the opportunity to inflict a fatal wound, utilizing the Morning Star's power. Hector and Carmilla depart with the shackled bishop. At the castle's entrance, Dracula's generals advance into Brela and Carmilla orders the bishop to bless the river, converting it into holy water. Bless the river, bishop. Make the water holy. Crossing the river, Dracula's forces encounter resistance from Carmilla's vampire legion. With a swift signal, her forces sever the bridge, plunging Dracula's army into the blessed waters. As the battle rages, Trevor valiantly defends the entrance, decimating the night creature's ranks. The river's purification claims the reanimated bishop and Carmilla's troops construct bridges, surging across to assail Dracula's stronghold. She asserts her dominance over Hector, claiming him as her own. You made your choice, Hector. You can't go back to the castle now. Meanwhile, Sypha secures the final component for the locking spell and initiating the incantation. She endeavors to relocate Dracula's castle to the Belmont estate. Carmilla's army besieges the castle, breaching the defenses, and Dracula ultimately learns of Carmilla's treachery, vowing to defend his fortress. Cypha's spell battles the castle's resistance, and Alucard reveals the castle's engine to her, aiding her efforts. Trevor dispatches the last even assailant. Dracula prepares for battle, but halts, sensing magic. Wait. magic. In the end, Cypha's spell maneuvers the castle, submerging it in the river, and the consecrated waters devastate both armies. As the castle vanishes, Carmilla and Hector are left bewildered and recovering first. Carmilla asks, what the hell just happened? What the f just happened? The castle materializes above the Belmont Library and Sypha suggests they surface, ready to face the unknown. Right on top of us. Trevor, Sypha, and Alucard ready themselves to depart the library only to find the staircase in ruins. Trevor suggests using ropes, but Sypha devises a solution by creating an ice column to lift them to ground level. After ensuring they're safely on the ground, she sends the ice column flying into the forest to avoid damaging the library's books. Outside, they catch sight of Dracula's castle. You did it, Sypha. Yes. And make their way toward the entrance. Inside the castle, the battle rages on until Trevor, Sypha, and Alucard arrive. Trevor issues battle orders. He'll instill fear, Sypha will disorient, and Alucard will lead the charge. The trio engages in a fierce battle, with Trevor wielding the Morning Star to dispatch vampires, Sypha using flames and ice, and Alucard transforming into a white wolf to eliminate their adversaries. With Dracula's generals and the vampires vanquished, they face the night creatures. Meanwhile, Dracula and Isaac retreat to the vampire lord's study amidst the chaos, and Isaac pledges unwavering loyalty to Dracula, even as they're besieged by Carmilla's forces. Dracula marvels at Isaac's devotion, but ultimately chooses to dispatch him through a magic mirror, leaving Isaac alone in the desert. No! Dracula! No! Turning to confront Alucard, Dracula questions his son's ability to stop him. You 
you couldn't stop me before. Alucard, flanked by Trevor and Sefa, declares they're not alone this time. The trio launches an attack, but Dracula proves formidable, shrugging off their blows and retaliating with a deadly magma ball. After a fierce struggle, Dracula and Alucard crash through the castle walls. The battle continues throughout the castle, culminating in Alucard facing his father in his childhood bedroom. Dracula, realizing the extent of his madness, offers no resistance as Alucard delivers a fatal blow. My boy. I'm killing my boy. As Dracula's flesh melts away, Alucard mournfully acknowledges his father's demise. Trevor and Sifa arrive just as Dracula reaches out to Alucard one last time. Trevor swiftly ends Dracula's life and Sifa incinerates his remains, leaving only his wedding ring behind. The trio exits the castle, bathed in sunlight, as they come to terms with the bittersweet victory and the end of Dracula's reign. Alucard wanders through the ruins of Dracula's castle, mourning the aftermath of the battle with his father. Meanwhile, Trevor and Sifa explore the castle's intricate architecture, lamenting the apparent loss of the engine that powered its mobility. The engine room that moves the castle. I cannot imagine how that Alucard joins them, revealing his intention to remain in the castle rather than return to his vault in Grezit. Recognizing the castle's significance as a repository of knowledge, Trevor suggests that Alucard take ownership of the Belmont estate. I bequeath you the Belmont hold. Reserve both the castle and the library as symbols of hope rather than fear. In the desert, Isaac encounters a group of men who attempt to sell him into slavery. Swiftly dispatching them, he resurrects them as night creatures, laying the foundation for his own army. As Trevor and Sifa stroll from the forest, they discuss their future plans. She expresses a desire to continue their journey rather than return to her former life with the speakers. And we're not finished, are we? And I don't want to stop. She believes that their partnership has allowed Trevor to grow and find purpose in fighting evil. Trevor, initially hesitant about the dangers they face, ultimately accepts Sifa's hand, realizing that he can't imagine a future without her by his side. So will you come with me? Nowhere else to go. Meanwhile, in the ruins of Brela, Carmilla and Hector scheme to seize power in the wake of Dracula's demise. She reveals her intention to return to Steria and enlists Hector's help in raising an army of night creatures. You are a forge master. You will create the horde for me. As Trevor and Siphus set off on their next adventure, bidding farewell to Alucard, he reflects on his past and the tragedies that have befallen his family. Overwhelmed by memories of his mother, father, and his own childhood, Alucard surrenders to grief, shedding tears for the losses he has endured and the roles he has played in his family's tragic fate. In a peaceful forest, Alucard feels lonely without his pals, Trevor and Sefa. Meanwhile, Trevor and Sefa journey in their carriage, battling leftover night creatures. Carmilla returns home, greeted by Lenore and Striga, curious about her travels. She recounts the chaos she witnessed for humans, vampires, and creatures fighting for survival, and despite her setbacks, she has a new plan. Chained behind her army is Hector, now her captive due to his skills as a forge master. Indoors, Carmilla meets her sister, Morana, and shares her journey, annoyed by the retelling while Hector suffers in a cage given a meager meal and cold water. In a town, St. German shops for apples as Trevor and Sifa arrive at the captured creature. Trevor seeks a reward from the judge, but is interrupted by monks from the priory. Their leader, Sala, praises Trevor's deed and reveals Dracula's demise, surprising Sifa and Trevor. Before things escalate, the judge dismisses Sala. Later, a merchant offers to buy creature parts from Trevor and afterward he jokes about beer, causing trouble with Sypha. Isaac leads a terrifying horde of night creatures through the city, seeking a powerful mirror. Unable to find it, he discovers a distance mirror revealing Hector's location at Carmilla's castle. As he tries to leave by boat, he is confronted by local authorities, leading to chaos and violence. Meanwhile, Carmilla shares her plans to dominate Eastern Europe with her sisters. They aim to control the fractured region by using Hector's skills to command the night creatures. Concerns arise about Hector's loyalty, but Lenore volunteers to persuade him to cooperate. In another part of town, Sypha and Trevor share an intimate moment before Trevor encounters St. Germain, who seeks entry into the Priory. Despite doubts about his motives, St. Germain gains limited access due to his valuable knowledge. 
Meanwhile, our favorite, Alucard, senses the arrival of Taka and Suman, former slaves seeking his help to fight vampires and free their people. He agrees to train them but is unaware of their true intentions. Trevor and Saifa, contemplating their next move, are approached by the judge, who confirms the town's Dracula worshippers and invites them for tea. At his house, they reveal their identities and mission, and the judge tasks them with investigating strange occurrences at the church. In a flashback, the judge recounts how a pack of night creatures attacked Lindenfeld, but were subdued by the town's guards. The pack leader fled to the priory, emitting a mysterious light. Subsequently, the monks emerged with pieces of the creature. Strangers began arriving at the town, taken in by the monks. The judge seeks to uncover why the priory attracts troubled individuals, a task Saifa and Trevor accept. Meanwhile, Isaac, a self-flagellating Sufi, discusses humanity's merits with the captain. He plans to kill Hector and continue Dracula's mission, but the captain encourages him to forge his own path and preserve humanity's beauty. In another subplot, Lenore visits Hector, offering food but revealing her strength when he tries to attack her. She warns him against mistaking her kindness for weakness. Well, that is one baddest way to claim that you are a Sigma woman. Taka and Sumi, intrigued by Alucard's puppets resembling Trevor and Saifa, inquire about his time alone in the castle. Alucard is unsure of the duration since he last saw his friends. Suna recounts their past under Cho's rule in northern Japan, where they plotted her downfall. They eventually escape and now seek Alucard's aid against the vampires. Meanwhile, Striga and Morana discuss Carmilla's ambitious plan skeptically, reflecting on their own relationship and the challenges ahead. Lenore visits Hector again, offering an apple in exchange for information about Dracula's intentions. He reveals his desire for freedom and questions Dracula's promises. Saint Germain gains access to the monastery but faces distrust from the monks. He observes unsettling conditions before conversing with Sala, who reveals insights about a mysterious symbol linked to the night creatures. Later, Trevor and Sifuk covertly investigate the priory, gathering information about its inhabitants. In Genoa, Isaac faces hostility from the locals and clashes with the surgeon, leading to violence between his night creatures and the townsfolk. Trevor explores Lindenfeld, noticing ominous symbols while engaging in introspection. He encounters the judge, who recounts his rise to leadership in the town. Together, they investigate strange symbols appearing around the area, suspecting a deeper meaning. Meanwhile, St. German delves into the monastery's secrets, guided by a mysterious crystal. He encounters Sala, the monk leader, but manages to evade suspicion. Stifa, aware of St. German's magical abilities, joins him and learns of his interest in occult matters. They discover a troubling symbol linked to transformation and time. As they rendezvous with Trevor, tensions arise between him and St. Germain, who reveals his quest for the Infinite Corridor. Trevor and Saifa, familiar with the corridor, exchange information with him. In Alucard's castle, Sumi and Taka undergo combat training, learning the dangers of fighting vampires up close. Despite initial struggles, they demonstrate resourcefulness and determination. The session ends with a visit to the castle, continuing their journey alongside Alucard. Lenore pays Hector a visit in his cell, providing him with clothes and suggesting a walk in the courtyard. Despite initial hesitation, Hector agrees, but only after reluctantly accepting to wear a collar. During their stroll, they delve into Carmilla's treatment of Hector during the war, revealing nuances in her character. Nearby, Carmilla and Strigo listen in on their conversation, emphasizing the strategic necessity of breaking Hector's spirit to mold him anew. Lenore then escorts him to a more comfortable cell equipped with resources on vampire magic, gradually earning his trust. Meanwhile, Trevor and Saifa discuss St. Germain, opting to aid him despite their initial suspicions. Outside, a monk clandestinely marks ominous symbols on the wall. St. Germain experiences a vivid nightmare involving traversing dimensions and encountering enigmatic figures, leaving him deeply unsettled upon waking. Isaac engages in a conversation with Flysize, a night creature with a tragic past as a persecuted scholar in Athens, shedding light on the complexities of human sin. Sumi and Taka explore the castle's inner workings, intrigued by its mechanisms. Then, Alucard guides them to the Belmont Hold, emphasizing the importance of starting small in their monster-hunting journey. Meanwhile, the judge observes St. German's activities, inquiring about his association with Trevor and Saifa. St. German's investigations lead him to a mysterious book in the church, its missing sections hinting at dark secrets. Dismissing Sala's explanations, he delves into the book's origins, linking it to a forge master from centuries past. Meanwhile, Trevor confronts monks carving ominous symbols, suspecting magical intentions. They bring one to the judge, who appears distressed and preoccupied with cleanliness. Saifa speculates on the monk's magical plans. Descending into the church's basement, St. Germain encounters a gruesome sight, a night creature impaled on the walls amidst strange sounds and blinding lights. 
Elsewhere, Isaac and his night creatures stumble upon a seemingly abandoned town, encountering a blind woman named Miranda. She mourns Isaac of the town's emptiness and directs him to a nearby city under the control of a powerful magician. Miranda hints at a transmission mirror in the magician's possession, offering Isaac a faster route to confront Hector. Striga and Miranda discuss the potential resurgence of human resistance, but Miranda assures her lover that human control is unlikely. Carmilla joins them and they strategize their next move. Lenore visits Hector and reveals the significance of her ring, symbolizing loyalty among the Council of Sisters. Intrigued by a book on vampire philosophy, Hector gains a deeper understanding of vampire culture. She capitalizes on his interest, enticing him to leave with her. Meanwhile, Sumi and Taka prepare for another training day with Alucard, sensing he's withholding information from them. Saint Germain encounters a night creature in the church basement, fleeing to Sala for help. However, Sala disregards his warning. On the other hand, Trevor interrogates a captured monk, learning of the monk's sinister plans. Saint Germain proposes a plan to confront the monks and the night creature, while also revealing his interest in alchemy to Trevor and Sefa. They prepare to fight the monks and open the infinite corridor. At the monastery, Sala anticipates a showdown with Isaac and his night creatures. As sundown approaches, Trevor, Sefa, Saint Germain, and the judge's men march toward the monastery. Back at the castle, Sumi and Taka confront Alucard about his secrecy, prompting a tense exchange before they decide to explore the kitchen together. As sundown descends upon Lindenfeld, houses bearing ominous carvings erupt in flames, sending screams echoing through the village. The monks and men-at-arms suffer heavy losses in the ensuing chaos, with Trevor and Sypha providing aid in the battle. Saint Germain, paralyzed by fear, narrowly avoids a fatal encounter thanks to Sypha's quick thinking, who shields him with ice. In the basement of the church, Sala witnesses a terrifying spectacle as flames engulf the floor and a monstrous creature emerges from a portal. Meanwhile, Trevor, Sypha, and Saint Germain confront winged night creatures inside the church, engaging in a fierce fight. Despite the odds, they manage to defeat two powerful adversaries. The visitor opens a portal, revealing Dracula holding his deceased wife Lisa, adding to the surreal events unfolding. In another part of the castle, Hector succumbs to Lenore's seduction, pledging loyalty to her in a moment of passion, sealing his fate with a mystical ring. Isaac observes a tower emitting a green light controlling enslaved people constructing an unknown structure. As the slaves rebel, Isaac intervenes, summoning a massive night creature to aid him. Despite facing overwhelming odds, Isaac confronts the source of the green light, ultimately defeating the magician responsible for the enslavement. Meanwhile, Alucard finds himself unable to sleep, joined unexpectedly by Taka and Sumi. Their initial intimacy takes a dark turn as they reveal their true intentions, using magical restraints to subdue the vampire. As Isaac explores the tower, he discovers a room filled with floating mirror shards, which assemble into a giant mirror capable of teleporting an army. Commanding his might creatures to eliminate survivors without destroying the city, Isaac plans to retain it for potential new occupants. Meanwhile, the sisters unveil their perfected plan with Lenore presenting an obedient Hector controlled by a slave ring. Despite Hector's outrage, she assures him of improved accommodations and his role as her pet. Trevor, Sifa, and Saint Germain confront a portal to hell, battling the unleashed might creatures. With Saint Germain's effort to close the portal, they manage to defeat the visitor and seal the corridor. In Lindenfeld, Sala fatally wounds the judge before meeting his demise in a pit of spikes. Trevor and Sifa discover evidence of the judge's sinister deeds, burning down his house and vowing never to return. As they leave, Trevor reflects on the moral ambiguity of their existence, resigned to a life devoid of moral clarity. On the other hand, Alucard faces betrayal from Taka and Sumi, ultimately killing them in self-defense. Distraught by their betrayal, Alucard reflects on the darkness within himself, realizing the parallels with his father's path. With their corpses displayed as a warning, he acknowledges his descent into a darker path, abandoning all hope just like his father. As Trevor and Sifa shift their focus to demon slaying after the events in Lindenfeld, they encounter various challenges over six weeks of relentless battles. From confronting a vampire necromancer commanding a skeleton army to thwarting zealots performing human sacrifices, they face adversaries worshipping dark forces in attempts to resurrect Dracula. Amidst the constant struggle, Sifa experiences a change within herself, feeling the weight of their burdens and frustrations. In a moment of vulnerability, she unleashes a tirade of curses, blaming Trevor for her transformation into a foul-mouthed individual. Their journey leads them to Tarbavis, where they confront and eliminate vampires Sladek and Ivan, what caused havoc searching for magical artifacts. Despite their success, Sefa grapples with guilt over the lives lost, while Trevor, overwhelmed by the hardships endured, struggles to reconcile his role in the world's ongoing turmoil. 
Observing from afar, Vampire Varney and his partner Racco lament the demise of their allies at the hands of Trevor and Sifa. Varney, once a member of Dracula's court, reflects on his fallen status despite his former prestige. Meanwhile, Alucard, haunted by solitude, continues to add corpses to the stakes outside his castle. When a messenger from Dynasty seeks his aid, he grapples with his growing resemblance to Trevor, both physically and emotionally, realizing the creeping influence of darkness within himself. In Carmilla's castle, Hector enjoys newfound freedom and comfort, navigating his tasks with calculated moves. He clandestinely places devices within the castle's cracks, while making strategic alliances to further his plans. Utilizing a transmission mirror, he contacts Varney and obtains crucial information about a mirror in Targovist. With a map of Hell in hand, he continues his cover activities, preparing for the inevitable. Returning to his workshop, Hector encounters Lenore, with whom he shares a close bond. As they banter and flirt, Lenore expresses her reservations about Carmilla's ambitions, prompting Hector's gratitude for her support. Despite Carmilla's impatience, he focuses on his task of forging a new hammer, a critical step in his plans. In a private conversation with Lenore, Carmilla reveals her grand ambitions to conquer not just Brela, but the entire world. She realizes the extent of Carmilla's ambition and her willingness to seize power at any cost. Their discussion is interrupted by news of Hector's success, signaling a significant milestone in their plans. Meanwhile, Trevor and Sifa find themselves in an ambush orchestrated by Varney's mag creatures. Amidst the chaos, they receive unexpected assistance from the Knights of the Underground Court led by Zamfer. Although their alliance is tentative, both parties recognize the need for mutual cooperation. After the skirmish, Trevor opportunistically scavenges valuable items from fallen foes, including a mysterious magic stone. While Sypha warns against the potential dangers of such artifacts, he remains undeterred, embracing the thrill of uncertainty in their journey since that is something they rarely do. Flesse is the intelligent night creature engages in a meaningful conversation with Isaac, the Forge Master. Isaac reveals his vision of emptying hell and offering damned souls a chance for penance under his command. He sees the night creatures not just as tools of revenge, but as beings with potential for redemption. Moved by Isaac's words and a taste of humanity through a berry, he recognizes the Forge Master's evolving nature. Isaac, contemplating his newfound agency and purpose, reflects on his transformation and asserts his ability to shape futures. Determined to carve his own path, he rejects Varney's plea for aid in reviving Dracula, asserting his independence from the vampire's schemes. Meanwhile, Striga and Morana face challenges in maintaining Carmilla's expanding territory. Amidst an attack by humans, Striga confronts the harsh reality of endless warfare and questions her commitment to Carmilla's cause. Morana shares her doubts, acknowledging the strain their duties place on their relationship. As Trevor and Sifat explore the devastated city, they grapple with their role in the ongoing struggle against evil. Empowered by their newfound autonomy, they reject Zamfir's plea for assistance, determined to forge their own destiny and no longer willing to be mere pawns in other schemes. In the ruined city of Tardovist, Trevor and Sifa take a moment to rest and reflect. He expresses his desire for them to take control of their lives rather than merely reacting to chaotic events. He believes that by acting with intention, they can shape their own destiny rather than being at the mercy of others. Sefa agrees, prompting Trevor to suggest that they start by revisiting the events that unfolded in Targovist. Meanwhile, in Dynasty, Alucard arrives just in time to defend the surviving villagers from the night creatures attacking the town. Despite his inner turmoil, he valiantly fights off the beasts and earns the gratitude of the village headwoman Greta. Despite her initial reservations about him, she recognizes Alucard as their last hope for salvation and reluctantly accepts his help. Unexpectedly, St. Germain emerges from a latrine and introduces himself to Alucard and Greta. He recounts his recent experiences involving the Infinite Corridor and his encounters with the enigmatic alchemist. He reveals his dark quest to control the corridor and his involvement with Varney and the vampires in orchestrating an attack on Danesti to drive its inhabitants to Dracula's castle. Convinced by St. Germain, Alucard agrees to relocate the villagers to Dracula's castle for safety. However, his contemplation of his own transformation and his inner turmoil raise doubts about the worthiness of life, leading him to question his own identity and choices. As Alucard leads Greta, St. Germain, and the other refugees toward his castle, tensions rise among the group. Greta expresses skepticism about their safety during the journey, but Alucard insists on pressing forward to avoid the night creature's potential daytime attacks. Meanwhile, St. Germain's uncertainty about the safety of their route frustrates Greta, who asserts her confidence in detecting magical threats. During their march, Alucard confronts a spider-like monster, causing chaos among the refugees. Despite the disruption, they continue onward, with Greta urging her people to fight alongside Alucard to ensure their survival. At Carmilla's castle, Hector continues his gruesome work of creating demons for her army. 
Lenore, disturbed by Carmilla's ambitious plans to conquer the world, confides in Hector about her doubts and frustrations. He offers sympathy and understanding, recognizing parallels between Carmilla's deceit and Dracula's betrayal of him. As the group approaches Dracula's castle, Greta shares her family history with Alucard, fostering a deeper connection between them. However, their journey is interrupted by another attack from night creatures, prompting Alucard to engage in a fierce battle to protect the refugees. Despite facing formidable foes, his strength and determination lead the group safely to his castle by dawn. Inside the castle, St. German recognizes its significance and acknowledges his role in aiding the displaced refugees. In Targovis, Sekva takes charge in rallying the community to address their dire situation. She encourages unity and resourcefulness among the people, impressing Trevor with her leadership skills. Meanwhile, he investigates the mysterious underground court, pondering its possible connection to the town's survival. Elsewhere, in Isaac's new base, the Forge Master reveals his evolved plan to conquer Styria, seeking vengeance against Carmilla and Hector. With his army of monsters at his command, Isaac sets his sights on eliminating all threats in Styria, sparing only Hector for his personal retribution. Not gonna lie, that sounds fair enough, right? As night descends upon Styria, chaos erupts as a portal opens, unleashing hordes of night creatures upon Carmilla's castle. The vampire soldiers and human mercenaries defend the stronghold, while Carmilla herself is confronted by the invading creatures. Lenore rushes to find Hector, only to discover his involvement in the plot to revive Dracula. Hector, resigned to his fate, traps Lenore in a magic cage for her safety and confesses his role in the scheme. He offers himself to Isaac in exchange for Lenore's life, but Isaac surprises him by revealing he's not seeking revenge. Instead, Isaac believes it's time for them to move beyond vengeance and forge their own paths. Hector provides Isaac with a means of escape and severs his connection to Carmilla's control over the night creatures. As Isaac confronts Carmilla, a fierce battle ensues, culminating in Carmilla's decision to take her own life rather than allow Isaac or his creatures to have her blood. Following Carmilla's demise, Striga and Marana, sensing her death, decide to leave Staria behind and ride off together. Meanwhile, Isaac and Hector discuss Dracula's resurrection, with Isaac advocating for Dracula's eternal rest. Hector, seeking penance, agrees to leave Dracula undisturbed and expresses his desire to be left alone with Lenore. Isaac, looking toward the future, vows to build a new way of life, free from the shadows of the past. With a newfound sense of purpose, he declares his intent to live and embrace the possibilities of the future. Finally, some positivity. Racco, fueled by a desire to remind people of the true nature of vampires, launches an assault on what remains of the Royal Guard, determined to assert vampire dominance. Meanwhile, Trevor and Sypha, Accompanied by Zamfir, venture underground to the underground court of Targovist in search of resources to aid in rebuilding the city. In Dracula's castle, St. German stealthily places mysterious devices around the premises, signaling his cohorts to initiate their plan. Unaware of St. German's machinations, Alucard engages with the refugees and aids in fortifying the castle's defenses. As night falls, monsters guided by St. German's signal converge on Dracula's castle. While inside, preparations are made for the creation of a vessel for the Rebus, the Great Work. Meanwhile, Trevor discovers a magic weapon in the underground court, steeped in the history of vampire hunters and the Rajaputra clans of India. The encounter with Zamfir reveals her delusions regarding the royal family and her misguided attempts to protect the underground court. Her beliefs clash with Trevor and Sypha's pragmatic approach, leading to tension as they debate the best course of action. Their discussion is interrupted by an attack from Racco and his band of monsters. Simultaneously, another assault unfolds as vampires and demons converge on Dracula's castle under the rising moon. As the chaos unfolds both in Targovist and at Alucard's castle, the stakes continue to rise. Racco leads the night creatures into the underground court, resulting in a brutal massacre. Trevor confronts Racco in a battle of blades while Sypha and Zamfir fend off the night creatures and attempt to rescue as many civilians as possible. Meanwhile, St. German begins the great work, using the souls of the fallen to fuel a portal into the infinite corridor with the intention of resurrecting Dracula and his wife. Alucard, unable to stop St. Germain due to a magical barrier, joins forces with Greta to defend against the onslaught of monsters attacking the castle. In the midst of the battle, Alucard and Greta discover St. Germain's dark intentions and the true nature of his ritual. Despite their efforts to stop him, they are unable to prevent the portal from being opened. As the situation becomes increasingly dire, he focuses on aiding his allies in the fight downstairs while Sypha struggles to protect the people of Targovist. The confrontation between Racco and Trevor reaches its climax when Zamfir sacrifices herself to save innocence from Racco's blade. Trevor seizes the opportunity to defeat him using a special weapon, while Sypha continues to combat the remaining mag creatures. Meanwhile, Varney in his search for the transmission mirror locates it amidst the chaos. 
With the mirror activated and the transmission point drifting, Trevor and Sifa realize that this may be their only chance to stop St. Germain's plan. Without hesitation, they make the bold decision to jump through the mirror, venturing into the unknown to confront St. Germain and prevent the resurrection of Dracula. As the battle rages on, Alucard, Trevor, and Sifa reunite and join forces to defend Alucard's home against the invading monsters. Together, they turn the tide of the fight, utilizing their individual strengths and teamwork to overcome their adversaries. Facing off against Dragon's fire-breathing monster, the trio works in tandem to defeat it, showcasing their seamless coordination and combat prowess. They then split up to rescue survivors and eliminate threats throughout the castle, demonstrating their unwavering determination to protect the innocent. Meanwhile, St. Germain continues his dark ritual, intending to resurrect Dracula and his wife to serve the sinister agenda of death. However, a shocking revelation occurs when Varney reveals himself to be the alchemist, serving death's malevolent plans for world destruction. As the battle reaches its climax, the trio confront Dragame and his team of formidable necromancer vampires engaging in a fierce struggle for survival. Despite facing overwhelming odds, they refuse to back down, utilizing their skills and resourcefulness to overcome their powerful adversaries. Ultimately, Trevor, realizing the gravity of the situation, makes the ultimate sacrifice to stop death and save humanity. With unwavering resolve and love for Sypha, he confronts death in a final epic battle, using every ounce of his strength and determination to defeat the malevolent entity. In a climactic moment, Trevor succeeds in vanquishing death, but at the cost of his own life, truly an eye for an eye. As the castle is engulfed in illuminating magic, Trevor's heroic sacrifice brings an end to the reign of darkness, ensuring the safety of humanity and securing his legacy as a true hero. As the dawn breaks over the newly conquered Sterian castle, Hector and Lenore find themselves amidst the aftermath of the chaotic events that unfolded. They share a moment of reflection, sipping the last remnants of wine as they ponder the uncertain future ahead. She expresses her disillusionment with the outcome, feeling as though everything they once believed in has crumbled to ashes. He attempts to console her, offering his perspective on the nature of power and ambition, but she remains despondent, feeling trapped and disillusioned by the path they've chosen. Faced with the grim reality of their situation, she decides to take control of her own fate, symbolically shattering her wine glass and choosing to confront the dawn. As she steps outside into the light of the rising sun, she confronts the harsh reality of her existence, finding solace in the beauty of the world around her. Despite the pain and uncertainty, she embraces the dawn with a sense of acceptance and resignation, finding peace in the knowledge that she has finally reclaimed her autonomy. Meanwhile, at the Belmont Hold in Dracula's castle, Greta and Alucard oversee the rebuilding efforts as they strive to create a new future for themselves and their community. With the support of Sefa and Trevor, they embark on a journey of renewal and hope determined to forge a better life for themselves and future generations. As Sefa prepares to depart to reunite with her people, Alucard extends an invitation for her to stay and help build their new village. Touched by their friendship and shared experiences, she accepts, embracing the opportunity to create a new home alongside her companions. Their reunion is interrupted by the arrival of a heavily injured Trevor, who miraculously survived his encounter with death. Despite his wounds, Trevor is filled with gratitude and love as he embraces Sypha, reaffirming their bond and their shared determination to overcome any challenge together. As Trevor receives medical attention, Alucard and Greta welcome him to their burgeoning village, Treffy, embracing the uncertainty of the future with optimism and determination. For the first time in his life, Alucard finds himself embracing the unknown trusting in the strength of their bond and the resilience of the human spirit. Meanwhile, in a distant village shrouded in rain, Dracula and Lisa embrace their newfound freedom and second chance at life. Choosing to leave behind the shadows of their past, they embark on a journey of self-discovery and redemption, hand in hand embracing the promise of a new beginning. Is it just me or does this sound too good to be true? Just kidding. So that will be it from us. If you enjoyed the video, then leave us a like and subscribe to our channel for similar content. Thanks for watching, we'll see you at the next one.